This is the big lie that you have spoken out against yeah. for a long time. You should feel very vindicated over the past I'm few weeks. I'm feeling pretty vindicated lately. Because the, the big lie we've always heard is, oh, these college campuses, these are just a bunch of idiots. Just wait until they get out into the real world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, well, uh, I'm looking around the real world now, and I'm seeing the consequences of those college campuses as the buildings are burning down all around the country. When all the people over the last, you know, five years were yelling at guys like us for talking about what was going on on college campuses, oh, it's just a bunch of kids, <laughs> yeah. you know, and it's like, actually, you do know that this is leaking out into society and these people are graduating and they're starting to take down institutions. Literally, yeah. you have young editors at publishing houses that are getting books canceled. At the New York for, Times. At, 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 and, and the New York Times has been taken out. Do you think this thing is going to destroy virtually every liberal institution well, so that we have? This is the big lie that you have spoken out against you know, for a long time. You should feel very vindicated over the past I'm few weeks. I'm feeling pretty vindicated lately. Because the, the big lie we've always heard is, oh, these college campuses, these are just a bunch of idiots. Just wait until they get out into the real World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, well, uh, I'm looking around the real world now and I'm seeing the consequences of those college campuses as the buildings are burning down all around the country. Yeah. The the issue with the institutions you bring up is a is an interesting one because we've been told for the past few weeks that all of these protests are about institutional racism, right? But then it occurred to me the left controls every major institution in America. Yeah. Control the media, controls higher education and lower education, controls Hollywood, controls big tech, controls administrative government, control basically other than talk radio and some little parts of the internet. Mm -hmm. The left controls every institution. So if there's institutional racism, whose fault is that? Well, not only whose fault is it, but they are the ones putting it into the institutions. They're right. the ones making it systemic, Harvard. Yeah. Harvard says we want less Asian people because you guys have had it too good through hard work right. and education. Right. So we're going to institute a racist policy. I don't know if you saw it. I just tweeted last night or this morning uh, this thing in, in Tacoma, Washington, yeah. where they're now go. It is going to be in practice that if you have lost your job or need housing because of COVID, they're only going to help people who identify right. as people of, of color. Well, that makes I it easy. You might have something. To say I about might, it. you know, the Sicilians yeah, have always yeah, yeah, had yeah. a little you, wiggle room here. Yeah, right. I mean, you see, you saw this with Uber Eats, right? Uber yeah. Eats. Oh, love this one. They yeah. come out. They say, if you're ordering from a black-owned business, whatever that is, I don't know. I mean, are you going to measure the equity here? A black-owned business, there's no delivery fees. But if it's a white-owned business, there will be delivery. So they are the ones actually injecting racism into the system. Of course. But, but that's the point. You know, I, it occurred to me, I thought, a, a friend came up to me the other day, said, Michael, it's almost like they want us to be racists. They're tr they're, the mainstream media, the left, they're ginning up this racial division. It's like they want us to be racist. And I realize they do. They, do. they actually need you to be racist because so much of liberalism, is about overcoming this oppressive past, right? So the whole story of liberalism is- Yeah, it can't end. It can't end. It's got, you've always got to be freeing yourself. But look around. You, you remember early on in the riots, the mainstream media tried to blame white supremacists. How many Klansmen are there in America? Like four left or something? Yeah. I, I, don't, I didn't see a whole lot of white hoods out there. I saw, I saw a white hood on the governor of Virginia, the Democrat, Ralph Northam. I didn't see it in the riots. So they, they have to either create this boogeyman or actually try to create racists if only to have a villain to then overcome. Well, also, when they're going through these cities destroying everything, we were talking about West Hollywood, which yeah. is literally the gayest place yeah. on earth. They have right. rainbow crosswalks. <laughs> the entire West Hollywood right now, as we tape this, is boarded up. I used yeah. to live there. I went there a couple days ago. It is boarded up. It looks like a third world nation. Right. And on every sign outside, it says BLM. The implication being, don't destroy our business. We're yeah. for you, Black Lives Matter. But help, watch what I can do here. If it was white supremacists that were rampaging through the neighborhood, wouldn't you be writing like white power on yeah, this yeah. side? Because then you go, oh, I'm, I'm a white supremacist, you're a white supremacist, don't, don't bust up my business. Of course. And also, it's worth noting, this is Pride Month, right? So I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. call we're, me crazy, no, we're I'm done. not an expert. I thought this was supposed to be the month to celebrate West Hollywood and the LGBT community. But that, I don't, it, progressivism changes so fast that now Pride Month is canceled and now Pride Month is BLM Month. What's it gonna be next year? 
you remember a couple of years ago at, at Toronto Pride when they stopped, BLM stopped the march and said, you guys can't march any further unless you sign our edict or our whatever it is. And, and basically they did and they let them march and a bunch of us talked about it and they yeah. said, oh, here you go again. Here right. you guys go again. This, this yeah. issue of the, the intersectional politics, it's, it's an interesting one here because you're almost seeing the return of more of an old school Marxism. You know, for the past 10 years, you've been hearing about how the gay community has something in common with the trans community, which is kind of ironic because those two communities sort of contradict one another. Either there, there are individual sexes and same sex attraction is ha having to do with the two sexes, yeah. or there's no such thing as sexes, and so that contradicts the, the G in the LGBT, right? But those have something to do together. You can have Gloria Steinem, radical feminist, holding hands with Linda Sarsour, an Islamist yeah. at the Women's March. That makes yeah. sense. But now you're seeing that, I think, begin to fade away a little bit into more of an old school, the Black Lives Matter interest is not the LGBT interest, and the BLM one is going to take precedence, even though all of, all of it comes down to a sort of radical Marxism. And this, this is the part that I think some of the squishy types don't get, because mm -hmm. they'll, they'll say the word Black Lives Matter. Nobody disagrees with that. Here's my evidence that nobody disagrees with that. Everybody posted the black square on social media. Everybody, everybody in government, in media, in corporate America, in all your friends, they yeah. all did it. It's no one yeah. disagrees with that statement. Yeah, even people that didn't want to do it, not because they're not for black lives, yeah. but because they don't like being bullied into things, they did it too. They did it too. Yeah. But then you look at the Black Lives Matter website, the About Us section, and it's not just about black lives mattering. At one point it says, we exist to destroy the quote, Western prescribed nuclear family. What uh, what does that have to do with police brutality? Or I, it's obviously, and you can see the founders of BLM come from radical leftist organizations, which get their funding from the Open Societies Foundation, which is run by George Soros. That's that's not a conspiracy theory with can nonprofits. I also say it's not it's not anti-Semitic to say that. I don't even know how would it be. George Soros has lived his life to basically fund every yeah. Jew-hating thing there is, pretty <laughs> right. much, right? Right. He would he love to have Israel wiped, wiped off the map. So, so the, the idea, idea that saying that George, George Soros funds, funds these things yeah. is anti-Semitic is complete nonsense. Right. It, be, it becomes, what, what the left wants to pretend is that this is a racial issue primarily. And it's not. The left uses race all the time. But it's not. You can see when you look at the About Us section of the BLM page, when you look at who's funding it, it's primarily ideological. And I think there's some squishy conservatives and Republicans who want to go along with it because they, they're afraid of being called racist, even when they're not at all racist. Uh, but that's a, that's a very bad deal to get into because then you're accepting radical leftist premises that are going to undercut everything you stand for. In many ways, though, do you think the ship has sailed to the point that we don't have enough power to yes. fix this thing. That, that you're laying out sense and, and thoughtful analysis and people are waking up to it. And I do think a ton of red pe people are being red pilled right now because, yeah. because just reality is red pilling them, right? I've got Hollywood lefties, friends that yeah. are calling me and they're like, where do you get a gun? So yeah. it's like, so <laughs> right. something's happening here. But in many ways, do you think that the destructive force of this thing yeah. has, has so infiltrated everything that nothing can can return. You, you've hit the nail on the head, which is we, we're beginning to see more people than just conservatives or classical liberals or just normal people are seeing, yikes, something has gone seriously wrong here. And yet very little is being done to stop it. You see even the president of the United States, more or less all he can do is tweet about it. And people mm -hmm. are saying, okay, enough tweeting, you've got to actually do something. But it gets back to the institutions issue. The left controls the institutions, which means the left controls the levers of power. The only institution that we've got on the right is talking. Mm -hmm. And so we can talk until we're blue in the face. We can point out hypocrisy until we're blue in the face. And the left says, yeah, okay, you've pointed out my hypocrisy. I still have the levers of power. I think what is required now of the right and of conservatives is to take back actual institutions of power and perhaps even more importantly to be willing to exercise that political power when we have the ability so to do so. So what does that mean? Rubber meets the road. What, what are you saying? Like actually start 
separate universities. I mean, there are some more conservative leaning universities and yeah. some of them have thrived in the midst of all this and University of Chicago, although it's not, it's not conservative per se, but they have actually instituted like an actual defense of free speech and yeah. they probably won't burn as quickly as the rest of these other places. But what do you actually mean by that? Like what, what does institution building look like? So that would be a wonderful thing. I mean, un unfortunately, I could probably count the conservative universities on one hand, and, yeah. but, and they're really great universities. I guess the, the silver lining in the storm cloud of the coronavirus lockdown and some of the riots is that you're seeing a collapse in many ways of this decrepit educational infrastructure that, that does, it not only does not give people an education and it does not give people a, an ability to have a career it, and it does saddle them with a lot of debt, all it does is indoctrinate them in a very modern sort of politics, which is not worth the cost of admission. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.